How's it going, everybody? Dr. Coin back at it again, and welcome to the Coin Cave. In today's episode, I'm going to be going over the rare and valuable Canadian half dollars you can find between the years 1937 and 1952. So these are the George the Sixth years, one of my favorite obverse for the Canadian coins. I absolutely love the design for these. Now, something that makes Canadian half dollars really interesting and collectible is the fact that from the years 1941 to 1952, the final digit on the date was separately punched into each die. So this allows all sorts of different errors and varieties to be born. Some of these different errors and varieties are gonna appear on this list. In the future, I also plan on making some more videos on the valuable half dollars you can find in the Victorian to George V era, as well as some of the Elizabeth half dollars that can be worth good money. But in today's video, we're gonna be focusing on the George VI era. But before I can get into this, I would really appreciate if you guys would hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you would like to see more coin collecting and numismatic videos just like this. And then what do you say? I show you some of the most valuable 50 cent pieces ever made by the Royal Canadian Mint. So as is pretty typical with coin collecting, especially with beginners or people that are just getting into it, if they discover something that they hear is rare or a key date, they will go online and they will find a number or a value for it and they will almost always assume that it is worth the absolute highest amount. But that is not the way that it works. When I give you the highest premium numbers in this video, what I am referring to is a high mint state. Now, what mint state means is the coin is practically undamaged and untarnished. It has not been cleaned, and usually it has been sent off to a grading company to have been attributed to a mint state. Now, a lot of the time when you're dealing with things like nickels and dimes, it is not actually worth it to send low grade key dates off to be graded or to resell them because there isn't really much resale value but that isn't necessarily the case for half dollars some half dollars will be worth decent money even in a low grade but a lot of the absolute premiums that i'm going to be talking about today are going to be for an ms65 example now for the george the six years of 1937 and 1952 finding ms65 and higher examples is extremely difficult and just about any of those George the Six years are going to be very valuable if you have them in that high MS state. One great thing that takes a little bit of work out of Canadian coin collecting is the fact that our key dates will repeat throughout the different denominations. So if you take years like 1938 and 1948 and 1970, pretty much all the different denominations like nickels, dimes, quarters, half dollars, they will all have that same key date and they will all be pretty low mintage for those years. Whether those years the mint went on strike or they had problems producing the dyes, there's a lot of different reasons that they can produce extremely low mintage figures for certain years. But a lot of the time for Canadian coins, if it is a low mintage key date for one denomination, it'll be a key date for just about all the denominations. So we will start off with the year 1938. Now, 1938 is an extremely hard date to find for all the Canadian denominations, but particularly for half dollars. Now, even though it was minted at two more pieces than 1937, so it is actually two more coins higher mintage than the previous year, it's quite a bit more valuable. For a VG8 example, which is at the very bottom end of the Sheldon scale, it can go for $15 to $20 easily. Now, for an MS65 example, we are talking anywhere from $4,000 to $4,500. Now, MS65 examples of the 1938 half dollar are extremely scarce. So, good luck finding one of those for anywhere near that value. A lot of the time, they will go over market value when they come to auction. And that is just about the only places you're going to be able to find these high designated key date coins. If they sell on eBay, they're going to go for way over the market value and they very rarely pop up on eBay, if ever. Just a quick notable mention, the 1939 does not appear to be exceptionally valuable when it comes to coin books and catalogs, but it is a key date and is minted at 287,976. So it's extremely hard to find high MS examples of this coin, and the value and the mintage figure are not exactly represented correctly. All right, as I mentioned earlier, between the years 1941 and 1952, the final digit was separately punched into each of the dies for the date. So this allowed for all sorts of different variations and errors 
to be formed, and we are going to start getting into those now, the first of which is the 1946 Hoof in 6 design. Due to dye damage and deterioration, a variation exists for the year 1946 in which the hoof of the unicorn protrudes into the 6 on the last digit of the date. The amount of error pieces that exist is unknown, but 1946 had already been struck at half the mintage of the past six years, ensuring this error variety is extremely scarce. At the low end of the Sheldon scale for a VG8, you can fetch about $30, which ain't bad for a scrap piece of silver. And for the high end, you can fetch about $5,000 for an MS64. Now, there are very, very few, if any, of MS65 examples or higher of this coin ever attributed so it is a very hard one to find even in the low ms examples and if you ever find one that looks in good condition don't think about it buy it now next up we are going to cover 1947 1947 is a very tricky year when it comes to canadian coins it has all sorts of different varieties for all of the different denominations and for half dollars it is definitely no exception for 1947 half dollars, there are five different varieties or variations, so we have quite a bit to cover even when it comes just to this year. Now, if you're wondering why there are so many varieties for this year, it is because in the year 1947 and 1948, India broke apart from the British Empire and gained its independence. So all of the different countries that were under British rule had to change their coinage on the back to remove the IND. Now the Royal Canadian Mint had a lot of trouble ordering the dies in for the obverse and the reverse. So what did they do? They improvised and they threw a maple leaf down as an improvisation tactic to be able to make it through that year. And if you find a coin with a maple leaf on it and the date 1947, it usually means it was minted in the year 1948. Now, I mentioned that there are five different varieties for half dollars, and most of these varieties gravitate around the number seven in 1947 and will gravitate around the maple leaf or not having a maple leaf. So we will start off with the least valuable and work our way up to the most valuable. So the least two valuable of the variations are the curved or short seven or the straight or tall seven with no maple leaf. Now for a VG8 example, which is at the very low end of the Sheldon scale, you can fetch about $15, which is a little bit over scrap price, which ain't too bad. And for high MS65 examples, you can fetch around $1,800 for the curved seven or $2,500 for the straight or tall seven and that is for MS65 examples, so at the very top end of the Sheldon scale. Now the 1947s with the maple leaf variation are more valuable than the ones without. And there are three different varieties of the 1947 maple leaf. Two go for around the same price, and there is one that is just about astronomical. It is one of the holy grails of Canadian coins, and it is actually more valuable and scarce for the circulation version of this coin than the specimen version. So let's start out with the cheaper ones. That is gonna be the curved seven maple leaf and the straight seven maple leaf. Now, for a VG8 example of either of these coins, which is gonna be at the very low end of the Sheldon scale, you can fetch around $30. So even for a very beat up, worn version of the straight seven or curved seven maple leaf, you can fetch a decent little premium over silver melt value. For MS65 examples of these two coins, you can fetch around $3,000. The last and most valuable of the 1947 variations is the 1947 curved right 7 maple leaf. Now the 7 on the other variations will curve to the left at the bottom of the 7s, but the 7 on this variation will actually curve to the right. So it is pretty difficult to tell, but there will basically be a little tail at the bottom of a curved 7 that will point to the right instead of pointing to the left. Now this strike also comes in a specimen strike, but I talked to one of my friends that I consider to be an expert in graded coins, and he told me that he has held one of the specimens in his hand and that the circulation strikes are much, much more scarce, especially in high MS examples. Now, in terms of value, for the low end of the Sheldon scale for a VG8 example of this coin, you can fetch around $1,500. So that is extremely valuable. Of all of the 50 cent pieces in the George VI era, it is by far 
the holy grail, one of the hardest ones to find, especially in a high MS example. Now, there is only one high graded MS-63 example of this coin, and it is worth somewhere around $18,000. Now, eventually, in the year 1948, the Canadian Mint got its act together and they started pumping out actual 1948 50-cent pieces. Now, when they got around to pumping these out, they did not get a chance to make too many of them because 1948, if you think, is a key date for some of the other denominations, well, check yourself because in the year 1948, they only made 37,784 pieces. So that is extremely low. I believe it is the lowest mintage figure of just about any Canadian coin for the George VI era. The dollars may be a little bit lower, but you do not get much lower mintage than that. So with a low minted figure like that, you can be just about assured that there is a high value ticket price to come along with it. Now for a VG8 example of this, which is at the very bottom of the Sheldon scale, you can expect to pay around $100. Now I have known for quite a while that this is one of the more sought after pieces. A lot of the people are looking for this to fill out their collection. You know, sometimes it's just about impossible to get your hands on a 1947 curved right seven maple leaf but it isn't impossible to get yourself a 1948 it is still affordable it is still out there but it is very hard to find in a high ms example for an ms 65 example of this coin you're going to pay somewhere around 1500 to 1700 dollars and there are not too many high ms examples floating around out there but it is pretty common to be able to find them for a decent price at the low end of the market but that is a very low mintage figure, 37784 It's almost like, why did they even bother, right? So we'll jump one year forward to the year 1949, where we have ourselves another error or variation. This is known as the hoof over nine variation. So this error is going to be very similar, if not almost identical to the 1946 error we talked about earlier. Now this is the 1949 hoof over nine so the hoof of the unicorn will be protruding over the nine in the final digit of the date. Now, the mintage figure for 1949 is already very low at 858,991. Not too many of this variation exist or are known to be out there. Now, when it comes to value for the very low end of the Sheldon scale at a VG8, it is worth around $15.00. Now, the highest graded known example of this air is an MS-64, and its value is somewhere around the $2,500 mark. Now, last but not least on this list of valuable Canadian half dollars is going to be 1950. Now, this is going to be the no lines in zero variation. Now, in the year 1950, the zero was designed with a series of horizontal lines in the center, but due to over polishing, it is said the lines were accidentally eliminated. Due to popular demand, this has been attributed by many in the coin community as an error or variety, and it can be worth quite a substantial amount. Now, a VG8, which is at the low end of the Sheldon scale, can be worth around $15, with an MS65 example of this coin being worth anywhere from $23 to $2,500. Well, I think that is pretty much going to do it for this one, guys. Today we covered between the years of 1937 and 1952. There are a whole lot of other valuable dates to cover when it comes to half dollars. And there are a whole lot of other denominations I still have to bring videos out for as well, like dollars and pennies. So make sure to keep your eyes peeled for those. I appreciate you guys watching so, so much. I appreciate all the support. If you haven't, please hit that thumbs up. Please subscribe. Let's keep this thing growing. Keep this thing moving. But until the next one, everyone, thanks for watching. Peace out and have a good one, y'all.